Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the stock firmware on your OnePlus phone. So nowadays, especially beginning with the Oxygen OS 13, many custom ROM requires you to flash the stock firmware across both the slots on your phone. If you don't do so and simply flash the custom ROM, then your phone will end up in a boot loop or a soft brick side. So you have either two choices, either simply flash the firmware as I, I will be showing you in this video or flash the custom ROM boot to fast boot mode then change the active partition and once again flash the custom ROM while doing that will also flash the ROM across both the slots but that will take quite a lot of time and it could also prove to be complicated and risky approach so the easiest way is to simply flash the firmware on your OnePlus phone using a custom recovery and your task stands complete so with that in mind please take a backup of all the data on your phone just to be on a safer side and let's get started. First off, you have to download the Android SDK platform tools. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. These are some of the files of the platform tools folder as you could see from here. Once you have done so, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute the ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu then go to about device then go to version and tap on build number seven times you will get a prompt that you are now in developer mode so go back again go back go to additional settings and you should now see developer option go there and enable the toggle next to oem unlocking as well as usb debugging you will get a prompt on your phone tap on ok you might get an rc key fingerprint prompt tap on allow so let's now verify the debugging connection so go to platform tools folder, type in cmd in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window. Now type in adb devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug the phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, then you could refer to my guide or the video and make sure to unlock the bootloader. All you have to do is simply boot your phone to fast boot mode using ADB reboot bootloader and then use the fast boot flashing unlock command. Doing so will, you will get a pr prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. This will wipe off all the data from your phone and unlock the bootloader. And your phone will then boot to the OS. Once it boot to the OS, make sure to re-enable the USB debugging on your phone. So once that is done, once you have unlocked the bootloader, let's now proceed ahead. And you will now have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For that, open CMD window inside platform tools folder and just type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now boot to fast boot mode in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame. Generally it takes around five to eight seconds for the phone to boot to fast boot mode. And once that happens, make sure that the device state is being shown as unlocked. This signifies that the bootloader has been unlocked and you could not proceed ahead. So now type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you will have to install fast boot drivers on your PC I have given a link so you could refer to my guide. In this guide, I also have a video. So refer to my guide or the video and make sure to install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. Once you have installed the fastboot drivers, simply use the Windows X shortcut keys and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone has been shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID signifies that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you could not move ahead to the next step. So now you will have to install a custom recovery. You could either install the custom recovery or temporarily boot your phone to that recovery. If you want to install the recovery, you could refer to my guide. I will explain all the methods and for all the Android phone. For instance, those which have a recovery partition and those which don't have a recovery partition, those which have a zip file of recovery and those which don't have a zip file only have an IMG file and how you could flash the recovery using to the RAM disk partition as well. So I will explain everything on this guide. However, a much better and easier approach will be to simply boot your phone to the TWRP for one-time usage. And that is what I'll be showing you here. 
this command is applicable across all the Android phone, whether your phone has a recovery partition or not, that does not matter. So as of now, I'll be temporarily booting my phone to recovery. If you want, you may flash the recovery permanently. But as of now, just booting your phone to the TWRP for one time usage will be also sufficient. And that is what I'll be doing now. So make sure to download the recovery file. The official recovery could be downloaded from the official TWRP website and the unofficial you could download it from XJ website. So download the recovery.img file and place it inside the platform code folder. So as you could see, this is the TWRP file. It's in the IMG format and it's there inside the platform code folder on my PC. So I will now have to boot my phone to the TWRP recovery. So for that, you could simply use the command of fastboot boot twrp.img and hit enter and your phone will now boot to twrp automatically in a few seconds again i am telling you we have used the boot command so that wrp recovery will be there only for one time usage from the subsequent boot up the recovery will be replaced by the sock recovery since we only want the recovery for one time usage that is why i use the boot command so with this our phone is now in the wrp recovery so next up you will now have to download the firmware zip file so you could directly go to the download link or verify the source from github let me first show you the source of this firmware so this is the github page and you could download the firmware from here and this is the same link which i have shared in my guide the download link so simply open this link file and you could verify the source code and everything of this from, from this page github page and then you could go to the download page and it will take a few seconds to load once that is done, let's just wait and you could see from one plus six all the way up to one plus 11. You could find the firmware for all this phone except for the one plus 10 series. So as you could see, we now have the firmware for all this phone. So for instance, I'm using a one plus 80. So go, go to your folder and choose the OS. As of now, I'm using the latest Oxygen OS 13.1 and I want the firmware for the India version. The latest F67 IN is for the India. EU is for the European and NA is North America. So I'm using the IN build. So make sure to download the firmware. And once you've got the firmware, you'll have to transfer the firmware onto your phone. So as of now, your phone should be visible on your PC. As you could see, my phone is visible here. So what I have to do is simply access the phone from my PC and transfer the firmware zip file onto my phone. As you could see, this is the firmware zip file. However, in rare cases, you might not see your phone here. If that is the case with you as well, then there are two approaches. You could either reboot to system, then transfer the file and once again boot to TWRP using this command or simply use the ADB push method. So let me show you the ADB push method. This is just for those users who are currently in TWRP recovery and they cannot access their phone from the PC. So in that case, you have to transfer the firmware file onto the platform booth folder. So simply transfer the firmware file here. Now for the ease of convenience, let's just rename the file to fw and the complete name becomes fw.zip. So now you have to open CMD window, type in adb push name of the file, which is fw.zip space forward slash SD card and hit enter and adb will now push the file onto your phone. And as you could see, we have now got the file. So you could now verify the file from here. In my case, I could already access my phone but i am only showing for those users who cannot access the phone so once you have transferred the firmware file onto your phone you could now easily flash it so go to install and now select the firmware zip file and perform a write up to flash it you will now be asked a couple of questions so the first question is it is showing the phone name the region and the firmware version if that is well and good simply hit the power up key to confirm once that is done it will now ask you to update the modem IMG. I will recommend you to select the yes option. So again, press the volume up key and it will then update the modem file and then flash the rest of the partition file to the partition. And once that is done, you could simply select reboot and tap on system and your phone will now boot to the OS. And with this, the firmware has been flashed to both the slots. So just to repeat, you will be asked just two questions. The first question is if you want to confirm the flash, it will show you the firmware region as well as the 
name of the phone and the region and the firmware version if that's well and good simply hit the volume up key then it will ask you if you want to update modem i would recommend you to press the volume up key once again and update the modem then it will flash the rest of the file and the flashing will take place across both the slots you don't have to do anything else now once that is done you could then easily flash the custom rom of your choice because we no we now have the oxygen os 13.1 firmware on both the slots so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and please like this video and subscribe to channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching